Hi, I'm Dan of Family White TV, and today I'm reviewing the $69 projector from Walmart. Which, if you look at the specs on the box, this is the most amazing projector deal available today. Caveat emptor. What does that mean? Let the buyer beware. Oh, well, maybe we should look at this a little bit more critically then. So, on the box, what do we have? We have these pictures showing this projector being used in a room with lots of ambient light, and there's this bright picture on here. Uh, the box claims 2,200 lumens of super bright illumination. Uh, you can have up to 150 inch image and it is 1080p compatible. So uh, let's see what the uh, specs on this box here. So it says up to 150 inch picture size, 30 inches, 250 inches, and the optimal picture size is 37 to 100 inches. It says, quieter fan design reduces cooling fan noise by a remarkable 5 dB. Well, 5 dB compared to what? It says it supports 1080p as well as all these different resolutions, but native resolution of 800 by 480. Now, let me point something out. 1080p resolution is 1920 by 1080 lines of resolution. So the native actual resolution of this projector is less than half of 1080p. Now it says super bright 2200 lumen color brightness and 2200 lumen white brightness, delivering vivid colors, whiter whites, backer blacks, etc, uh, etc. Et and it has some other stuff on here. So we'll be comparing this with my actual home theater projector, which is a Mitsubishi HC4000. Now my current projector has 2,426 hours on the lamp, so it should be at a severe disadvantage compared to this projector. But uh, we'll see how bright it actually is, and we'll see how it really stacks up to a projector that's uh, quite a bit older than this one. So let's do a quick unboxing. Battery's not included. Hmm, looks like this may have been opened already, and may be returned already. So there it is, here's the actual projector, there's our HDMI ports on the side, it looks like it's already meant for a ceiling mount on there, and on the side here, it's got a IR port back here, IR on the front, various buttons, and the power comes in through the side here. And a cord that's nowhere long enough for a ceiling mount. Uh, let's see, it does, oh, there's a keystone adjustment here. I thought this was a zoom. This is not a zoom. This is a keystone adjustment. And there is a focus adjustment here, which goes quite far in and out. All right, so let's hook it up and see how it compares to my actual home theater projector. So we're going to be looking at a series of pictures I've taken here, and these I've taken with a Nikon D5300 SLR camera. Uh, and all of these I have the camera set in manual mode uh, with an f-stop of 5.6, exposure time of one-third of a second, and an ISO of 400. And again, that is going to be the exact same setting for all the pictures taken of both projectors. So this is my Mitsubishi HC4000 home theater projector, and this is a uh, pure white screen that I've projected using it. And admittedly, this one is not perfect. Uh, you may notice that it's a little bit of a cyan push on the right side, and a little bit of magenta on the left, and the center is kind of where the white is balanced at. And this is because the lens does have a little bit of chromatic aberration. It's not the best projector in the world, but it's still pretty decent. Now, if we compare this to a pure white screen on the RCA projector, we're going to see that it is not nearly as uniform. Now I wasn't able to calibrate this to white. The projector does have a uh, serious red deficiency in it. But you will notice that the center of the image is noticeably brighter than the sides. I mean the ends of the image does have a lot of light fall off and this is a uniform white field across the entire screen. Uh, same size as the Mitsubishi HC4000 projected image just this RCA projector does not do nearly as well with the uniform color pattern. Now we'll take a look at the resolution. Now this is a test pattern and on the right is my Mitsubishi HC4000 and on the left is the RCA projector. 
Now you're going to notice a few things here. Uh, the main thing that you're going to notice is how much brighter my Mitsubishi projector is, even though it does have a lamp with over a thousand hours on it. And even though its rated brightness is not nearly as much as the rated brightness for the RCA projector, the RCA projector you will notice is dimmer. And I will point out that this was one single picture that I've taken from the camera. I haven't stitched two pictures together side by side, but what this was is I had one half of the lens of my Mitsubishi covered up and one half of the lens of the RCA covered up so that I can get this uh, two halves of the image here. Also, you're going to notice that the resolution of the RCA is very poor compared to a true 1080p projector. Now zooming in on this pattern in the bottom left corner, this is what it looks like on the RCA projector. Uh, you can kind of make out what's going on, but you really can't read the lettering on top. You can the, uh, the largest lettering, but it's really hard to read. Now compare this to a true 1080p projector, and there's just a night and day difference. Everything is so much Everything's a lot sharper now. You can see all the lines. You can kind of make out the checkerboard pattern below the actual writing, and all the writing is nice and clear and easy to read. And that is a difference you get with a projector that actually has a 1920 by 1080 panel in it versus a projector that accepts the high definition signal but actually displays it at a lower resolution. In the case of the RCA projector, 800 by 480. Now for actual content, this is a screenshot from the Game Star Citizen. I didn't want to use anything from an actual movie because YouTube's been going a little bit crazy, and if, especially with this Europe thing going on, I don't want my video demonetized because I used a single frame from a movie. So this is a screenshot from the Game Star Citizen, which we are allowed to use. And this is the actual source file. This is not a picture of the projected image, but this is the source file you're seeing here. And now this is the image as projected from my Mitsubishi HC4000 projector. Again, the same manual settings on my Nikon camera. And for comparison, here is the same image as projected from the RCA projector. It's the same image size, but you can see that it is a lot dimmer and our resolution is starting to suffer here. Now zooming in on one portion of the screenshot, this is the Mitsubishi projector, and you can see the detail here. And then with the RCA projector, you're noticing a huge loss in detail here. And, and now here's a side-by-side -side picture of what they look like. And this was, again, the uh, same actual picture taken with half the lens of the RCA blocked, half the lens of the Mitsubishi block. Another thing I'll point out is that I found in the top right portion of the RCA projector, they've included a nice little hair in there for, uh, for you to see on the screen. I don't know if this is on the mirror or on the lens, but uh, hey, maybe if I disassemble this projector, we'll uh, see what's actually going on there. So since the box of this projector has a picture showing how amazingly well it does in a room with white walls, white ceiling, and lots of ambient light, Let's see how it really does in a room with actually a dark walls, dark ceiling, and a little ambient light. So let's go ahead and turn down the lights. Okay, so some commentary here on what's going on. Now my projector, which is the HC4000, which is the one on the right, is a home theater projector, and it is not meant for rooms with lots of ambient light. It is not a light cannon, so it won't perform well in rooms with a lot of ambient light. But as you can see here, even though it's not performing great, it is performing much better than the RCA projector, which is, of course, the image on the left, which, I mean, should be pretty obviously different, I mean, dimmer than the HC4000 on the right. Now you might notice that there's some uh, weird color artifacts with the HC4000. That's an interaction between the uh, video camera I used to record this and the projector. It's not something that's uh, visible in real life under normal viewing. So now let's listen to some noise. Are you done yet? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Go ahead and yeah. Mitsubishi projector, low lamp. RCA projector noise. So yeah, that noise was measured with the microphone approximately uh, one meter away from the projector, and the RCA does have kind of a high-pitched sound coming from it. Now, what you're seeing here is I did hook up a hard drive to the projector to see how it does uh, with the hard drive hooked up directly. 
and it does uh, read from it okay with most files. One thing I will note is that the projector actually looks fairly decent in this video. Well, in real life, it does not look anywhere near this bright. What's going on is the camera that I'm using to record this has uh, opened up the exposure a bit more and it's compensated for how dim the projector is. So the image that looks pretty good right now actually in real life does not look that good. Now this is the keystone adjustment of the projector and well, one other thing that I did notice while I was playing around with this is that when you do the keystone adjustment you cannot get the entire image in focus. Either the bottom of the image will be in focus or as I adjust it the top will be in focus and the bottom will go out of focus. So even though you can use the keystone to square up the image you're not going to have edge to edge top to bottom focus. It's actually quite off. And so there it is, the cheap $69 home theater projector. So, do I recommend it? No. Now to be clear, it's about what I would expect from a projector this cheap. And if it was marketed as a cheap projector, I might say it would be worth it just as a novelty or as maybe a portable TV to have for some maybe specific reason. But it's marketed as a home theater projector. And as a home theater projector, it doesn't do the job. And even worse, it might put people off of projectors altogether. I mean, consider the claimed brightness, 2,200 lumens, whereas my home theater projector has a claimed brightness of 1,300 lumens when the lamp is brand new. And yet with over 2,000 hours on my lamp, my projector is still clearly brighter than this brand new projector with a rated brightness of almost twice as much. So how can they claim that this projector puts out 2,200 lumens? Well, I'll tell you. I don't know. And neither does Epson. Now you see, Epson is a maker of real home theater projectors, and Epson has taken RCA, or rather Technicolor SA who owns the RCA brand, to court over the misleading claims. And so I applaud Epson for taking them to court, because if somebody's first taste of home theater projection is this thing, they are not going to be impressed. So what's a good entry-level home theater projector? Well, I'd say you'd want to stay around the 500 mark at the, at the least. Just be sure to check the projector's native resolution. It should be at least 1920 by 1080 or 1920 by 1080. Also make sure to check reviews to make sure the projector that you're looking at actually is performing up to par. Now if you want to know more about home theater projection, I do have a video on that for you to check out. And I also have other videos on home theater that you can check out at your leisure. So remember, caveat emptor and thanks for watching.